Hello, hello, beautiful people. It's time for another project. So, what you see in front of you is going to miraculously turn into a geode wall display. This is a little wooden canvas, I guess you can call it, that I got at Joann's. It is made by Fab Lab. It was $10, 50% off. It was $5. The back has two holes if you want to hang it or a string stapled in. Now, what I did was I just taped back here. Technically, it is one piece, but there is a little crease here and I was worried about resin coming through. So I just put some tape around the little crease. That's what you're seeing that. And I also have it levitated off of the table here in case it does seep out a little bit. So inside, what you are seeing is a product called Epoxy Sculpt. Now I had seen this stuff originally on one of my other favorite artists channel, her name is Tammy, and you already know by the name that she's awesome. So anyway, her channel is called Tam's Creative Corner, and I will link it below. She makes some amazing geodes, and she uses this stuff to make barriers. Now, what is this stuff? This is a clay-like substance that you mix equal parts of each container together to form this clay. It looks like clay. It is pretty much clay, but it has epoxy in it, okay? So just like when we mix our resin, you have to be pretty exact with the measurements of this. So you try to pull out the same size wad from each container and you just mix them together, wear gloves, mix them together for two minutes until it's fully incorporated into each other. And then you roll it into a snake-like shape and just put it down onto your canvas where you want it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, one of my subscribers sent me a challenge bag. Thank you so much, Joyce. And in the challenge bag, she had included two of these little hummingbird feeder parts. I love a good challenge. Joyce is like me. She saves everything thinking that there's going to be a purpose for it in the future. And this time it paid off because I used these to stamp the clay while it was still wet to make a little texture. Isn't that cute? So, thank you very much, Joyce. She sent me a little bag, a box of um, goodies. And as I said, there was a challenge bag in there. So that's one of the things that I've used so far. And I pretty much have figured out a way to use everything she has sent me. So I'm excited to use those in other videos. But anyway, back to this. So this stuff is approximately, I paid $22 with tax on Amazon. And it's kind of expensive, but you don't need much to make the smaller size geodes. And they did have a big size that was $40 which you get much more for your money, but I just didn't have that much to spend, so I got the smaller size. Once you mix this, you have one to three hours of working time with it, and uh, dries hard. You can paint it. That's what I'm about to do right now. I'm going to paint it, and um, I'm really excited about using it. So, my first step in making this geode is to paint out the inner barrier here, and my clay dividers. What I want to do though is tape the 
edge up here so that I don't have to be so cautious with my paintbrush. So I'm just going to lay some of this frog tape right up along the edge just to keep it clean. I like to pick up things like this to pour on because it's just something different and you know for five bucks it's a good time in my eyes. Now the colors that I'm going to be using for this geode so far are Teal by Lorez, which is a paste. Cool Mint, also a paste by Lorez. Um, I'm thinking a chameleon brown color, which is a metallic looking brown which has a highlight or a low light of interference green in it. And then I have some gold. I have some different color acrylics out. It's going to be one of those things where I figure it out as I go. I have this antique maroon by Deco Art. And I also have um, Festive Green. And then by Martha Stewart, I have the color of Scallion. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of those, but I have them out. For glitters, that is really a hard choice for me. So from Laura's Art Corner, I have Tuscan Teal, Apple Green, Crystal Clear, and Copper Penny. All very pretty colors. I also pulled out some of my own uh, glitters that I got from craft stores. I got this pretty moxie, which is a really dark color green, like a forest green. I have this really light, it's called Aqua Ultra Fine. And then these were part of a kit that I got from AC Moore. And they are both key lime is the color. Just different sizes. For stones, Laura's Art Corner is also selling stones for geodes. I have some of her mirrored pieces here. Very, very pretty. Now, some people will lay these all in one direction. I like to just lay them down and however they come out of the bag is how they stay. So some of the pieces you can see mirror on and some of the pieces you can just see the, the glass side. And I just think it makes it sparkle a little bit more. Here are the two colors from Lorez, the two new colors, two of the new colors that I got. Thank you, Lisa Wyatt Art, for sponsoring my channel and allowing me to purchase those. That was awesome of you. Very surprised. I've just truly humbled by the outpour of love I get from people. I really, really am. All right, so I'm going to pause you guys, get ready, and I will be right back. Okay, so to keep my video at a decent length. I'm going to do little parts, pause, just enough to show you what I'm doing, okay? Especially for this part, because this is just very self-explanatory. So I have a little of the antique maroon, it's called, and it's very close to that um, chameleon color I'm going to be using. So basically what I want to do is just paint this inner edge all the way around. I don't care if it gets down in here because that's going to be covered up. Okay, so I'm going to do this all the way around 
until I have full coverage. Okay, so now that I have that all painted, I'm gonna work on my lines. For those, I'm going to be using, this is made by CraftSmart, and I apologize for the lighting. I'm working in my kitchen. I have those stupid soft lights up in the ceiling you can't see, so I have a little light pointed at my artwork right now. Uh, CraftSmart Brass. Gild this is pretty much gilding paint, which is liquid gold leaf. This is the color brass. Um, you can, by the way, use this in resin to color your resin, or you could just paint with it like I'm going to right now. Uh, once it dries, anything like when I put the resin in the sections, it will stay on. It won't smudge or anything like that. Um, I have a link for this stuff below. And I will also put a link for this epoxy sculpt. If you're into geodes, give it a try. So I'm just shaking up my uh, liquid leaf here. It does settle over time and what I like to do is just take a popsicle stick and give it a little mix it does have the uh, excuse me for a minute and a cat hair on my hand of course so it does settle a little bit so I will just take a stick see that that's the bottom of it and I'll just incorporate it back in or else it looks very grainy Okay, now I'll leave that little chunk down at the bottom. That's fine. It's pretty mixed up now. We were talking the other day in the group about odd smells, liking odd smells, and this is one of them, boy. So use a paintbrush that you don't care about because this is does leave an oily residue behind and it's extremely hard to clean out your paintbrush. So I'm just going to go around and paint my barriers with this brass gilding paint, aka gold leaf, liquid leaf, I should say. I love using this stuff absolutely love it again it doesn't matter if I touch the bottom of the box that's what I'm going to call this the box um, because I will be coloring that also now it does matter if you touch the side like I just did so I will have to touch that up after I probably should have did this first, then painted the side. <laughs> As always, I do everything backwards. I'm just going to finish this one up here and show you how nice this texture looks in this clay from that little simple piece that she sent me. It's really amazing. If you put your mind to it, the things that you can dream up. And for so many years, I didn't use my mind creatively. And in general, I should say. <laughs> you just want to make sure you get the underneath side here a little bit. There will be resin in this area that covers some of it so if you don't get right down to the bottom it's not a big deal but you want to get most of it and it's just so pretty wow wow we sadly because of the lighting you won't see how bright it is but isn't that pretty all right, so I'm going to paint the rest of them, and I'll be right back. Okay, so you guys will not realize this, but 
I just moved everything back into my room because I had to have my bright light. It was making me not feel into it. And I needed you to see how blingy those lines look. So anyway, painted those, painted the inside. So now what I'm going to do is just throw a quick coat of acrylic in the open areas, kind of to help me visualize what I'm trying to achieve. So the first color I'm going to put down is going to be by Martha Stewart, and it is called Hummingbird. It's a multi-surface pearl acrylic paint, which means it has some shimmer to it a little bit. Not as much as a metallic, but it has some. And that color I'm thinking I want to put in here. So, again, I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera. Just going to do a little area for you. To show you what I'm trying to achieve. So you will see a little bit of this brown through the acrylic paint, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to have the same colored resin on top and you're never going to see that. Put a little bit too much paint in here. So I'm going to use some of it for up in here also because that was my plan to begin with. This kind of just gives you a little gist, or should I say, a plan of what to do. Because a lot of times, and I was just talking to somebody about this, this is the hardest part of the whole process. Coming up with ideas and colors. At least for me it is. And especially when I'm doing a geode, that is the hardest part for me to decide, okay, do I keep this whole section this color? Do I put lines through? If I do, are they different shades of this color? It's a whole thing. And usually it comes together in the end, but sometimes it takes some work mentally to get there. And sometimes, you know, you'll make something and you hate it and you just got to pour over it until you're happy. That's just how it goes. And especially with resin, okay? You can paint with acrylic paint and get what you want. Resin is a whole different beast. It has a mind of its own. So... That is my two cents for today. Also, I have bought some denatured alcohol from Walmart. It was five dollars. If you have to, if you buy it, get it from Walmart because I noticed at Home Depot and places like that, it's double the price. I don't know why. I was trying to avoid getting paint on these, but it doesn't matter in the end because it'll be covered. Most of this, most of these, all you're going to probably see are the tops of them by the time the resin is in there. All right, so I'm going to finish painting this up, the colors for each section that I'm thinking of using, and then I will be right back. Alrighty, so you can see that I have all of my areas painted with the acrylic paint and that's kind of just a guide to help me as I'm moving along. So I'm going to mix up my resin colors now. I will show you those colors once they are mixed and we will get right into this. Okay guys, the only two colors that I have mixed up are my chameleon brown and some Molten Gold by Lores. And the reason for that is 
is although I know I'm going to be using the cool mint in the teal, I don't know how much I'm going to need of each yet. And I don't know if I'm going to blend with other colors, if there's a lot of factors that go into my decision. So what I do is I mix it as I go, but I absolutely 100% separate my resin into smaller cups so it doesn't heat up quicker. If you leave a large amount of resin in a cup, it will start to heat up quicker and then you have less time to work with it because the curing phase has begun. So this is that chameleon brown color. I'm not sure you're going to be able to pick up on the interference screen in it, but this is made by a company called Just Pigments. And then this is the Molten Gold by Lorette's. Okay, so I told you earlier I bought some denatured alcohol. My plan is, this is denatured alcohol. My plan is to add some to the chameleon brown and make a dirty pour cup using the brown and the gold. And I'm going to fill in those sections of brown with that mixture. So you only need a couple of drops of this stuff. And it is alcohol, it says clean burning fuel on the front. So using a torch, not so sure. I'm going to use a heat gun to pop my bubbles and stuff. I have to do more research on that front. So now I just need to pop it open somehow. I didn't realize you needed a college degree to open this stuff or else I would have did it before. Bear with me one second. It says, pry to open. <laughs> Holy crap. To open, pry off. Very interesting. Now I had this open. There it goes. Jeez. All right. So I have a little pipette here that I'm going to stick into the jar over to the side here and I'm going to get my brown and I'm going to add I don't know that's probably like four drops of it and whatever's left in there it smells like nail polish remover All right. Jeez. Okay. So I'm just going to give that a swirl through the color. Not sure if I added enough. But anyway, I'm going to make my dirty cup for you guys. Dirty cup means just pouring the colors in. The cup together and you can uh, alternate the colors as you pour them in. Some brown, some gold, and back and forth. If you pour up from high it tends to sink down and mix a little bit. A little more gold. And a little more brown. All right, I'm gonna take the stick and just give it a swirly do in there. You're probably not gonna see much because the, they're very close 
in color. But what I want to do now is just fill in my two brown sections that I have very carefully. And I'm going to use my stick to kind of spread it out. And I really don't see anything fancy from that alcohol. Maybe I needed to add a little tiny bit more. Feel like I'm not level here. So I'm gonna have to fix that. You just want to take your time. Remember, art is supposed to be relaxing. You know, I always feel rushed because I don't want to keep you guys hanging too long. But I have to remember to chill out. If you guys get bored, you could just hit fast forward, right? So, you know, you can't even see that gold in there really at all. careful of your sides. You don't want a bunch of resin going up on them if you can help it. I'm sure by the time I'm done it'll be covered. But <laughs> Another do as I say, not as I do. Okay, and then just a little tiny bit more over here. going to leave that to fill it in itself. All right. So now I have to do my mint color. So for that, I'm going to get the Lorez out. This is cool mint, one of my new colors. You have not seen this on my channel yet. So my Dixie cup is half full and I'm adding this much in to start with. You can always add more if you need it. This stuff tends to be very potent so it lasts a long time and you don't need to use much of it. See that? Nice solid color with that little tiny bit. So now for that, 
I am going to pour some in here. Being careful not to put too much. I want to try to keep it from going over that barrier that I made. And I'm just going to put it in here for now to get it out of the cup. Very carefully try to get in here. I'm sorry guys, waiting for an important phone call. Okay, so first thing I noticed in a few spots here, I did not make contact with my board with my borders. Uh, so a little bit of the resin is seeping under. So that's one thing to remember when you put this epoxy sculpt down, you have to make sure it is making contact in all spots. So now I am, <clears throat> excuse me, just mixing up a tiny teensy bit of the teal by Lorez. And this is, I believe, a transparent. Let's see. So I have probably a tablespoon of resin in the cup. And I just literally dipped it in there. This is a semi-transparent, I believe. Meaning you can see through it a little bit. I mean, if you put a lot in there, you're probably going to get pretty close to opaque. But... Um, technically it's transparent. So with this, I want to kind of just do a little section through these two mint areas. And I have to move along because I'm using a Virotex and you only have 25 minutes with that. It's already warming up. So maybe right along the border here. Let's see or outlining the border. And I did not want to do that. All right, and then this one, same thing. Like right up. Up and out. And I will be repainting my sides. <laughs> All right, so now with that, I'm going to take my little toothpicky thing here and maybe just swirl it a little bit to give a little bit of design. I'm also going to hit it with the heat gun. But I kind of want to get it up and around that border. If you know what I mean, jelly bean. Sorry about the phone, it may happen again. Just waiting for my doctor to call. Just a little bit of a swirly do in here. This will be covered by rocks in the end. All right, so next up, I want to get a green, 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 green. So I have approximately a quarter cup of resin. And to that, I am going to mix in two different greens. The first one being a metallic festive green by Deco Art and a little bit of the scallion color. To lighten it up a bit. 
Now, with acrylic paint, again, this tends to move things along, so you got to be careful with how much you add. Just thinking of something here. You know what? I'm changing my mind, guys. I have some sea grass by resin art that I'm going to use instead. I think that will look very pretty. <clears throat> so this, the instructions are an eighth of a teaspoon per ounce of resin. I don't have an ounce of resin in there, so I'm literally going to add just a little tiny bit, like that much. Let's see if that's enough. And I think we could use just a wee bit more. Let's see. Yeah, just a tiny, tiny bit more. So I have to get another stick because I cannot contaminate my colorant with a resin stick. Put just a little tiny bit more. That's it. Like a pinch. So that'll do it. Alrighty. I'm going to pinch my cup. Try not to make too much of a mess. Got a really narrow area here. And these colors may look odd, but I think in the end with the glitter and the stones, they'll look nice. One thing I'm not happy about is this drippage right here. That is coming through my barrier. But I'm going to have to deal with it. And I think I also am going to go up through this brown here. wipe off that resin as best as I can off the side. All right, good enough for now. So for these tight little areas, usually I will use a toothpick or something that's really small <clears throat> to try to keep it from going on the sides or places that I don't want it to be. So I'm going to pause you guys while I dilly-dally fill in this area in. 
Actually, I like, no, I'm not. You could just fast forward if you want to. Because it's not that big of an area to do. I'm almost done already. Boy, that gold is really, really popping. Really popping. Alright, see how I'm dragging this with the toothpick? Just trying to get it into that little area. Just have patience. It will get in there. Ready? Come on. All right. Okay. So that part is done. This part is done, except for this. Just swirl it around a little bit. And then I'm going to take some more of the teal. No, I'm not. All right, let me blow this around a little bit. it for that this heat gun I have linked on my channel underneath in the description under $30 comes with all different types of attachment this little attachment is perfect for these little areas like that as you see I was able to control in there what I was doing so now we're going to do some um, glitter and what I'm going to be using is some of that hmm I have some of the copper penny which comes from Laura's store I have these little cups I'm going to just add a little bit of resin into it this is the copper penny glitter very pretty. Now I'm wondering if it's too bright. Huh? Let's try it. Why not? So I put a decent amount in there. I'll start with that and see how thick it is. When it comes to glitter, you want it to be a little bit thicker so it doesn't run as much through your piece. Now this may be way too thick. So I'm going to have to add a little more resin to that. That's way too thick. You want it to plop off the stick, basically. Like that. Plop, plop. Okay. So let me put this here. 
And with this glitter, I'm going to come right through this section. Or actually, I'm going to come right through this section. Right in here. Along my barrier. Okay, so I'm going to do that all around this barrier and this barrier, and then I will be back. Okay, so I got that in. Now I'm going to do a little bit of this big, chunky Tuscan teal along here. And then I will put in the stones. And I realize that I have a little bit of resin like on the tip of this here, but I'm not going to sweat it because I could just repaint the gold when it's all dried. It'll go right over that. So. I think I'm going to go up against this border here. Be very patient while you do this. Very patient and concentrate. You can already see when this dries, that's going to look magnificent. It's going to look like little mini stones in that area all up along here because the glitter is just so chunky. I love this glitter. This is what you would call super shard glitter and it's German made I have a link to Laura's store in the bottom of my videos along with any colors that I use she offers those great at shipping packages out right away I usually have my stuff within two to three days Actually, I always have it within three days, but sometimes I have it in two. She's really good at getting right on that order. And I think I'm going to do, since I have some more left, some down here too. Why not, right? This stuff is just too pretty not to use. You'll see it more also when I uh, hit it with the torch and pop all these bubbles. There's a lot of bubbles in this resin right now. Okay. Now what I have to be careful of are the stones because it could very well push that right over that border. So, let's see what happens. Okay. 
gonna place them down one at a time here just in this little see pushing pushing it out they're nice big chunks of broken mirror I love it just got to be really careful All right, so I'm going to pause you while I do this. <clears throat> okay, guys, so with a few pinches of glitter and a hit of the torch, we are going to call this baby done. Let me just pop open my glitter here. I'm going to use the Aqua Ultra Fine glitter that I got at Michael's, I believe. Either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Nope, Michael's. So just some in this blue area here. And then also this whole entire blue area here. Because the more bling, the better, if you ask me. Now, tricky part down here. All right, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> Usually I tend to try to make things better and I only make them worse. So, I'll leave that like that. I'm going to take the handful of glitter I have and throw it in the bag. Garbage. And then I'm also going to take some of this ultra fine key lime and hit the green area here. The more bling, the better, baby. With art. Okay, and then, just so the brown doesn't get jealous, I'm going to get a ultra fine brown that brown that I have over here somewhere. I'm sure of that. I'm going to pause you guys for a second because I'm about to run out of time. Okay, so I have an ultra fine glitter called Coffee. This is all part of a set. So on top of Laura's glitter, I'm adding this too. Well, I'm not adding it on top of hers. I'm adding it around hers. So I just want that extra bling. So I'm going to hit this with the torch, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to say my goodbyes because I'm probably going to run out of time on my video. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for the outpour of support, the encouraging comments, just all of it. Um, I am truly humbled by some of the stuff going on lately, you know, between donations and challenge boxes and sweet gifts it's just overwhelming and I truly truly thank you guys I really do I hope that I entertain you somewhat and um, here we go well, you'll see this more to, after it cures which 
I'm wondering if I should post this video now or wait for the fine. You know what? I'll wait till it cures to show to post this video. Right, there you have it. That is finished except for the sides that I now have to paint. So I will take you in for a close up if I can. And stay tuned for the end result. That gold really, really pops. Boy. So I added some stones up there also. And this glitter, you'll see better tomorrow when it's all cured. Or at the end of this video, I should say. <laughs> so that's it for now. Stay tuned for the end result. Okay, everybody. So here's where we're at with this. I pulled up the tape that was around the edges and a little bit of the antique maroon paint was underneath the tape so I decided to do the whole box. Alright, as soon as I'm done I will pull that tape you see sticking out a little bit right there. I will pull that off and paint the back too. But the next step for me while this is curing is to add da, 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 some gold mica paste made by golden you can see how it dries right there okay i have a link for this in my box below my description box i should clarify that so my idea is to see if i could do this with one hand Gonna spread this out nicely. And before I screw the whole thing up, let me get my bearings here. So I'm gonna spread this out nicely all along this upper part of the frame. Not the sides, not the back, just this upper, outer frame. And then I am going to take some clear resin, just fill this up, not all the way, just enough to cover most of it, let it cure, and it will be done. And I will come back to show you the finished results. Alrighty guys, here she is in all of her glory. I really, really like that uh, epoxy sculpt. Now it's made by two brands. Uh, there's epoxy sculpt and there's magic sculpt. They're both the same thing. I'm going to link both of them in the description box below along with Tam's Creative Corner. I'm going to link a video of her channel and also I believe she has a video showing how she rolls this out. If not, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just roll it into a snake shape and then bend it into the form you want. And as I said, mine has texture pattern in it because I used that little part from Joyce. So again, thank you, Joyce. And so you guys can see the mica flake paste worked out beautifully and I have a future video regarding this mica flake paste coming up hopefully later tonight. So make sure you check that out. You won't want to miss it. 
I hope you're all having a great day and happy pouring.